What's up, y'all? Today we are talking photo whistles. Uh, the Pro versus the original, I guess we're calling it. I actually didn't realize I had this. I found it in a jar the other day. Uh, this one I knew I had because I did a video on it uh, years ago. I'll link that here if you want to check it out. They shipped this to me. They asked me to do a review, and I did. And it was a long time ago. And then I found this one recently. I thought, well, what's the difference? So that's what we're going to find out. First things first, let's have a tune on each of them. Play the same, maybe a part of a tune, just so we can hear, give you a little bit of, kind of off-the-cuff comparisons. See what sounds good without really a whole lot of thought. So, let's blast away here. Okay, that was the regular, here's the pro version. What do you think? Did you hear a huge difference? They both sound very gritty. It's sort of a trademark of the, the photo style and really the generation. Anything kind of built in this sort of fashion, you know, it's sort of the stereotypical tin whistle grit that you get, the chiff. Some folks like it, some folks can't stand it. It's one of those things to be aware of when you're buying, but this definitely has that. That has that kind of classic tin whistle sound. Is there a huge difference between the pro and the regular? Let's kind of break down some details. My test whenever I get any new whistle or whenever I'm playing a whistle for the first time is to do an octave jump scale, a D scale, bouncing each note between the two octaves, because it accomplishes a couple of things. One, it lets me know how much air pressure is required and how reliable that octave jump is. And two, it lets me know just how the intonation is. Is it in tune with itself? What are the, what's the range of the whistle and what does it sound like? How gritty is it? So here we are with the, uh, the photo original here. if there's a scale or a system of measurement to determine relative grittiness. I don't know if there's any sort of way to accurately uh, scientifically measure that, but to my ear, the upper octaves were exponentially higher. Let's take, for example, you can hear how raspy that is in the higher octave versus actually how clear it is in the bottom. And again, a trademark of this style of whistle something to decide for yourself how much of that you like. Same test with the Photo Pro here. Well, with the exception of the high B, the, the highest note, which was kind of surprisingly clear, there's a substantial difference, to my ear anyway, between how clear the lower notes are and how scratchy the upper notes are. Let's talk tuning, and we're going to use my already established, fairly unscientific tuning app as our comparison system here. Uh, just going to see really how in tune with, the, with itself is, is the whistle. That's the main thing I'm going to be concerned with here. Let's just see. We're kind of in the ballpark. Well, the lower octave is within range. You know, the green light's coming on, I think that's pretty good. You can adjust your blowing to get it in tune. Let's do the same test on the lower whistle, or on the photo uh, standard here, the original. Whoop, very sharp. Let's fix that. All these whistles are tunable. If you, you, you may have to break the glue on these things, so but if you do that, you can adjust it. I gotta say, that was a lot more in tune with itself than the Pro. Kind of interesting, was not expecting that. This is a kitchen scale, which we're gonna use to weigh these. Without, just immediately I can tell that the Fadog is heavier, it's denser, it, it just it feels more weighty. I'm not necessarily saying that's better, but let's just find out exactly how much. Here's the original, let's see what we're looking at here. 1.2 ounces, okay. Versus the Pro at 1.6 ounces, so four tenths of an ounce heavier for whatever that's worth. When it comes to weight, I'm far less concerned about how much does the thing actually weigh versus where's the balance point. I've mentioned that before in other videos that I've done 
where I find a whistle to be too top heavy or, or just doesn't fit right in my hand, that's really a more significant concern. And that's one that, you know, much like the grittiness concept, it's hard to quantify. It's a matter of preference is what I'm getting at. So with this whistle, I can tell you at least the balance point is pretty close to that top hole. In fact, right, I would say right over the middle, right through the center of that top hole. The Bodog original is a little higher. There again, talking about, what, a millimeter or two? Not a huge difference. So basically the balance is slightly above the B whistle here, or the B hole there versus slightly, or right on it, on this whistle. Not a noticeable difference as far as I can tell. No, I really can't feel much of a difference that way versus something like, say, a, a, a John Sint whistle, which is significantly more top heavy. Right, let's get this out of here, and instead we're gonna add something else to the mix, which is a different photo that I also found in the same jar that I found this one. This one's blue. It is not, as far as I can tell, a pro. The sticker is peeling off. No idea where this came from. Here's our comparison, same tune. Very similar to the other three, or the other two, rather. So it looks very similar. It looks like they've basically just taken the same tube and painted this one blue. Whereas this, the Pro, I'm gonna use the word anodized as if I know what I'm talking about. I'm not entirely sure that's what it is. It looks um, more professional, for lack of a better word. It doesn't look like it's just gonna flake off, which this, obviously, already is flaking off. So I think you can get these basic ones in a variety of colors. If it were me, I wouldn't be bothered to get a color. I would just get whatever the basic bare metal is, whether it's aluminum or whether it's brass. Yeah, that color seemed to work fine. And then with the Fud Oaks, you're getting that with the green mouthpiece. That's kind of the standard one here. Price-wise, there's not a whole difference. I think it's like $10 versus $12 to get the Pro version. You know, I'm thinking at this point, it's a matter of appearance. What do you like? Do you care if it's a little heavier, if it feels a little denser? Which it, it certainly is denser. It's, it feels sturdier. It doesn't exactly play sturdier. They play almost identically. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned with the performance of the instrument. They're all basically the same. And they all play like you'd expect them to. A $10 whistle should kind of have a bit of that grit and dirtiness to it. It's, it's meant to, to have that sound. That's my take anyway. Let me know what y'all think. See you guys in the next one.